Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. We are going to talk about a highly, uh, you know, discussed topic, and that's the free-to-play players and how they can be competitive and how they can actually acquire, you know, the pay-to-play status, the patron status in game uh, through just by playing and just by gold. So first of all, this video is being recorded right at the launch, roughly within a, a week of launch, uh, on one of the newer servers. So things will have changed dramatically if you are watching this video in two months, four months, six months after the game is launched. Um, you know, prices are definitely subject to change on a lot of items. A lot of the tactics and tips that we're going to give out today aren't going to be viable anymore um, because again, prices will dramatically be changed, and a lot of things will be dirt cheap once the market is saturated with them. So, going off of that, if you are watching within, you know, the first month or two of the game release, these are some great, great tips for you uh, and roughly prices that are probably going to be about the same. The first thing is, you're a free player, so you don't get really labor offline. You have no labor offline regeneration, which is a pretty big deal. So, you only gain five labor points while online. And that's not that much, because everything in-game actually requires labor. You have to be very, very conservative with your labor points. And I'll show you why. So everything you have, you'll pick up these coin purses. And this coin purse is, is your loot. And you can see there, it costs one labor point to open the coin purse. So if you're getting five every five minutes, that means you can only open up you know, five of these every five minutes. The mobs actually drop these almost every time. So you're going to get a lot of these coin purses, and you can kill a mob probably in 15 to 30 seconds. So you're going to actually burn through your labor by actually opening these coin purses. And inside them, you only get a small amount of silver. You get like one or two silver coins. And you have a chance for some other drops, some Archeum uh, moats at this level, and some other crafting materials as well. But it's a lowish drop, so you're not really going to get it. So most likely... You're spending one labor for about two silver coins. And that's not a very, very good conversion of your labor points to gold. Labor in this game is pretty much another gold currency. Uh, it also gives experience every time you spend labor. So you can think of labor as the one currency that you cannot really buy. We'll get into that a little bit later because you can actually buy it. But it's the one currency that is in demand the most, that is required for everything in the game that you must have labor. So spending it to open up coin purses is not a great idea. You need to conserve them, especially as a free-to-play player. As a pay-to-play player or a patron, you can open up your coin purses and acquire nice loot. Uh, you know, you are going to get a lot more labor points. You will get five labor points as you are offline and ten labor points as you are online. So you're getting a little bit more labor than you can uh, really deal with for most players. Next, you're going to look at gear. You're going to need gear as you are playing the game and going through and leveling up. And thankfully, the quest items that you get from doing the quests, they don't require any labor to actually open up the little mystery boxes here. So you can see we can click on it, we can open up the mystery box, and you'll get your weapon or armor or whatever it is. And this is completely free, no labor cost required. Uh, before this patch, they actually did require labor, so that was a very, very big strain on your labor points. But now you can freely open up all these items without spending labor. Be careful, though, on the other hand, is if you ever do get an item drop from a monster, we don't have one on us. Oh, actually, we do. We have an item drop right here from a monster. So this dropped from a monster, and it actually requires labor to open. So you have to make sure you read your items and make sure that you are not spending uh, labor you know, that you can't really afford to spend. So, we have established now that you want to be a pay-to-play player. You want to be a patron, but you don't want to actually pay for it. You want to get it with in-game gold, and that's perfectly acceptable. This is a free-to-play game. You can play and do almost everything in-game without spending a dime, but you can get a lot more out of the game if you are a patron. You can own land, you can uh, pay taxes on your land so that you maintain it. 
you get a lot more protected farming land that way and then you can also list items on the auction house as a free player you cannot list items on the auction house you can buy things from the auction house but you cannot sell them on the auction house that's not that big of a deal as people are blowing it out of proportion uh, here's why you, there's tons and tons of chat channels and so we have the trade channel open up right now we can actually type in slash trade and it'll turn blue and you can sell anything that you want on here so you say selling 15 Guild of Star house design PM offers willing to sell cheap and you see it comes up blue a nice baby blue so it's actually a very very important chat channel that a lot of people notice because it's a different color standard and you'll get a, quite a few responses we don't actually want to sell that the Guild of Stars yet but that's just an example of it how you can use it so you're gonna conserve your labor you're gonna build your labor up and then you're gonna eventually want to use it in these areas that are called public farms so on your map you have this scarecrow dude right here and this is on the east faction I only know stuff about the east I have not played west I am not gonna play west so I do not know anything about the West Faction, but they do have public farms over there as well. So this public farm has a certain amount of crops that you can grow, and there's around 6 to 10 crops that you can grow in this public farm area. There are public farm areas scattered all throughout the world here, or throughout the continent, I should say, and you can plant different things in each one. So over here we have another public farm. It's it kind of hidden between all these icons, but as you are progressing through the game, you'll see these public farms, and they each will be able to hold different items. You can only plant a limited amount of items in each public farm. You can use several of them at the same time. You will pull up. So if you go over to the vocation in the bottom right, you can pull up the public farm thing, or you can actually just press uh, P, it says and it will show you you have a public farm which is the first one you have a public nursery which is for trees you have a public ranch which is for like cattle and livestock and then there's also a public stable so there's four different types of public farms that you can use and you can see the public farm has a quantity of 10 you can plant 10 crops in that public farm the public nursery has a quantity max of 5 the public ranch has a quantity match of 5 the public stable has a quantity match of five so meaning you can plant a total of 25 free things completely protected and safe in these public farm areas you are restricted to what types of things you can plant so again here's one right here in Tiger Spire Mountain area here's one over here in Mahadeva right in this area this one over here you can plant barley and you can plant goose and I believe ducks a few other things the big one that you need to get to as soon as possible is over here this is a public nursery a public farm as well and this is the one where you can actually plant trees you can plant horn beam samples and those trees right there cost 25 labor to actually chop down which is a lot of labor so this is where you want to conserve and spend your labor mostly is because those 25 labor points that you are going to spend to chop down a tree is going to give you anywhere between one to two gold worth of logs depending on the price on the market when you chop down that tree you're going to get six to eight logs those logs typically sell for six to thirty or so depending on how new the server is how in demand the logs are at the start of the servers um, the first week or so the log prices are in the higher end roughly around 20 to 30 per log so they are very expensive as the servers mature and players are using less logs and also are planting their own logs the prices drop roughly around down five six seven silver still very good because you get seven or eight of them every time you chop down the tree so say you get seven that's 49 silver for 25 labor points um, so 
not too bad there. And then, so it's, it's, it's a roughly, uh, you know, at seven silver, it's not that great of a trade off. You can see, if you remember correctly, the coin purses roughly gave around two silver per labor point. Um, so if the tree prices and the log prices are down to seven silver, you don't necessarily want to be chopping down trees unless you want to be a logger. So you have all the proficiencies there, and you do want to specialize in one type. Every time you spend your labor points, you build up proficiency points. And so in this account, we have raised our husband tree because we have been chop er, chopping up sheep. So you can see nothing else really has been leveled up, and we have some proficiency in a husband tree means we're good with farm animals and such. So again, if the tree prices is down to like seven for the logs, you do not want to waste your labor points there. 25 labor points to plant a tree is fairly, fairly expensive. And there are other ways to spend your labor points more efficiently. Then another good item to actually use your labor points on is cotton. Cotton is a very very in-demand item that typically sells for one to two, one to three silver depending on when the server uh, you know maturity is and what the demand is but the thing is when you plant a copper seed, cotton seed, that actually generates you uh, anywhere between seven and nine cotton and then also a chance for a rare drop which will generate you around 27 cotton plus the initial seven to eight cotton that you got before. So theoretically you can pick up 35 cotton for spending uh, one or two labor points depending on if you plant it out in the wild. Cotton also grows extremely fast, it is a two hour growth time and we will actually try to get over to a seed merchant and show that off. But yeah, so cotton is a very very high profit margin material mainly due to the fact that it generates, like I said, six to eight cotton every time you harvest it. So it gives you a lot of little things. And again, it is extremely cheap. It takes, I believe, two hours, if I remember correctly, to plant cotton and pluck it. So you can plant anything out in the open wild. And if you don't have a farm, this is how you're going to have to do it. And if they can't be used in those public farms that I talked about, if cotton can't be placed there, or if cotton can't be placed over here, then you're going to have to go and plant it out in the wild. And if you plant it out in the wild, anyone can come and steal your cotton, or they can actually uproot it, which means they tear it out of the ground before it's mature. So there's going to be a timer on the cotton. The cotton's going to count down. Two hours elapse. The cotton will mature and be pluckable at that two hour time limit and anyone at that time limit if it's out in the open can pluck your cotton so if you are planning out in the wild you have to make sure that you time it correctly where you go out there and you are next you know like as soon as your cotton is ready to be plucked you waste no time whatsoever if you plant it at 2 p.m. pacific standard time then you make sure you get there at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and pluck your cotton as soon as it is ready to go. You can hide them in secret places, um, you know, and hopefully put them where people won't look. For small crops like cotton and potatoes and barley, things like that, it's actually very, very easy to hide into the environment with the shrubs and the bushes. So you can hide a couple cotton seeds or a couple barley seeds over there. So we'll go and actually find the seed merchants here and show you exactly what we're talking about on the cotton aspect. So cotton costs one silver and 40 copper. If you plant it outside, it costs one labor point. So if you plant it outside a non-protected area, it costs one labor point. The growth time is two hours and 52 minutes. And then if you plant it in a temperate climate, it will actually grow a lot faster. You can also water your cotton to make it grow faster. So we've picked up 10 cotton. We're gonna go plant some seeds and we'll actually just plant them right here in town. 
And again, you can see these are shrubberies, bushes. And this is what I'm talking about. This environment is a great hiding spot for cotton and for small crops. So you can see you can right click and you can put the cotton. And we'll go ahead and put the cotton right in here. Once you put the cotton out, it has the growth timer. It is 2 hours and 16 seconds because this is the ideal climate. It's in the temperate climate, so it got a growth bonus. You can water it with F right here. So we water the cotton, and now the cotton will grow a lot quicker, so an hour and 48 minutes. So again, we'll plant some more cotton over here. You can actually plant and water at the same time. You can see right there. So I am watering, and then I have another cotton seed already coming out. And the only thing that takes the time is you can see it has a cooldown on the cotton. So once the cotton is done off cooldown, you can plant it again, even if you're doing some other kind of action. So we will plant all these cotton right here in in pretty much in the city uh, where everyone has to go. We don't have any more water. You get the water from a well, and there are wells all over town. So we planted our last cotton there. Each cotton roughly costs us about one silver to buy. We're going to go try and find a well because the well is typically like over by the seed merchants. So I do not see a well. Now what we'll do is we'll go show you how profitable this will be. Um, I will also cut and come back to the cotton once it's done. But here, so this is the auction house. You can see how much cotton sells for. So cotton is only going to sell for right now currently for 88 copper. But again, you get 6 to 8 cop, uh, cotton per gathering. So we're going to make anywhere between you know, 6 and 8 silver per gathering. And then there's also the chance for a rare cotton seed. And you can get one of these. And this right here, like I said, will generate uh, roughly 27 cotton, I believe if you get that on top of the six to eight cotton that you get. So the cotton price is on the lower end. It's not the greatest thing to grow, uh, but you can see it's all supply and demand. So if things are in demand, you can plant those items, those crops, and you can make bigger profits on them. There are several items that do cost a lot of silver to sell. We'll see if I can find an example here for you of something. So this is cultivated ginseng. This is a very, very expensive crop. As you can see, the cheapest one that you can buy is 17 silver and 80 copper each per one. So when you plant these crops, you do plant and you get two to four uh, on average every harvest. And then you also have the chance again for the rare crop that will give you uh, nine cultivated ginseng plus those two to four that you got generally. And the reason this is very expensive is because it takes one day and a few hours to grow. So it takes a whole like 26, 27 hours to grow. So it's a long growth time and other players can find it and like I said, tear it out of the ground. So the longer the growth time, typically the higher yield of profit you are gonna get. So you're probably gonna want to do and set this, set this up depending on how much time you have to play. If you are gonna plant something, plant it right before bed, find something that's gonna last 10, hours or so to grow, plant the crop, go to bed, wake up the next morning, uh, you know, go to your crops, make sure you get there a little bit early so you can see if they're still there and you can be right there and gather them as soon as they are harvestable and you're going to have a nice, nice haul of profit. So you can see different other items. This lotus is two silver, 75. We have alloy over here, which is a 11 silver per. And again, typically the items that have longer growth times are going to be selling for more. 
You may be thinking, oh, bananas are great because there's 39 silver each. Yeah, they're really, really good to grow, but it's extremely hard to harvest them because you have to harvest a banana tree. And you don't want to plant trees out in the wild because they're very visible, they're hard to hide, and people love to come down and chop down trees for their lumber. So bananas, that's why they are very, very expensive. And especially early on in the server, you need the bananas to actually do a trade run that gives you a large scarecrow. So in the beginning of the server, bananas are a great item to grow on your small scarecrow. Uh, as a free-to-play player, you do not have your small scarecrow yet, so you cannot do that. There is no public farm to plant bananas either, so you cannot do that. So there are some restrictions there. But yeah, definitely try and plant some of the higher growth time crops. So that covers over the crops and how to actually use your labor points efficiently to make money. There's another great way to actually get gold quickly uh, and efficiently. This is probably the fastest way to get gold and get the apex that you need. You need roughly right now around 80 gold to buy the two apexes. And how you get 80 gold is just by questing. Simply doing the quests in game will net you a small amount of gold, but there are specialty quests, the green story quest that we are doing right now, and we have been doing since the beginning of this video. They're up here. They always kind of stick by your trade bar, uh, your quest menu, since they are the story mode ones. So you go ahead and you do these guys. And this one is not giving me anything. It's giving me a good amount of experience, a small amount of silver. And these quests, the green ones, you typically don't even have to kill anything to complete. So you can actually rush. And this is what they call the uh, Guild of Star rush for the housing, the land rush. You can rush the green quests and get Guild of Stars. And we'll get some Guild of Stars right here as we turn the quest in. Go through the next one. The NPC actually ran off because he's trying to kill this guy. So we're having trouble to actually talk to him since he went off to fight the, the monster. So you can see the guild of stars right here. So now as we complete this next green quest, we're going to actually get a guild of star. And guild of stars are the premium currency for housing designs, boat designs, and all the cool stuff that is in Arcage. So guild of stars are highly, highly in demand. And currently, you can get 15 guild of stars for a house design in around... 30 minutes if you are proficient at doing just the green quests and pounding those out right away. Uh, if it's your first time, it's probably going to take you around one hour and a half to get 15 Guild of Stars by doing the green quest. You only have to do around about 15 to 20 green quests to get 15 Guild of Stars. And that house design in the beginning of a server, of a new server, will actually sell for a good amount of gold, uh, probably around 10 gold or so. In a mature server, since there is a ton of houses out there for sale, the house design will probably only be worth one to three gold. So as the server matures, those prices drop dramatically, uh, and that's because all the land is taken up and all the houses are already placed. But there is still something that you can do. You can rush and get 50 Guild of Stars, which is doing all the campaign quests, and you can do all those pretty much without doing any other story quests at all. You can just go green quest to green quest to green quest to green quest and collect all these Guild of Stars. It will be a little bit difficult as you are going to be under leveled as you keep going forward. Um, so if you want, if it's your very first time at doing this, you're going to want to actually uh, do a couple of the quests on the side here or kill some monsters just randomly and level up slowly but surely that way. But yeah, so we are going to now go to the next green quest. Um, if it's not in the region that you are just in, just keep following the road because you'll notice we're going to move over here and now the green quest pops up right on your map over here. 
So we are only level 12 in this account. We have 17 Guild of Stars already. You do get a great amount of experience doing the, the green quests, the story mode quests. And again, you do not have to kill a lot of creatures doing all the story mode quests. There's only about five on average. Each race has a different storyline quest to go through, quest chain. And there's roughly about five monsters in each quest chain that you have to kill. Um, they can all be soloed. You do not have to have parties or anyone to kill. Even if you are very, very low level, you can still kill these guys. It may be a little bit more challenging and difficult, uh, but you do have you know, to use your brain and think and kite, uh, but you can definitely do it under leveled at you know level 10, level 11, level 12, at the level that you are just by doing the green quests. So as you continue on to do your green quests, you get 50 Guild of Stars once you are complete with all of those, and you can use those 50 Guild of Stars to buy some great designs. You can buy a clipper design a harpoon or adventure clipper design which is a boat that is extremely fast and that is highly in demand um, a lot of players they, they need those 50 yield of stars to get their clipper they want to do it they're too lazy to go through the green quest again and again and again uh, because you can do this on any character that you create and you can only do it one time per character so if you do it once you would have to delete your character and make a new character get go through the storyline quest, do it over, rinse, and repeat. Um, the 50 Guild of Star designs are actually worth around 1 gold per Guild of Star. So the Clipper design roughly will be worth around 50 gold. The farmhouse that you can buy for 50 Guild of Stars is again worth about 1 gold per Guild of Star, so about 50 gold as well. And that has been steady for a while. Even in Alpha and Beta, after several months, the prices for those designs stayed roughly around 40 to 50 gold per 50 Guild of Stars. So doing story mode quests, which will take you roughly the very first time you do it, around 4 hours or so, will net you 50 gold for 4 hours worth of work. Once you've learned how to do it and have done it once or twice, you can actually knock out all the storyline quests in about two hours and so in two hours you can generate 50 gold um, just by doing the storyline quest and you can delete your character start a new character because currently there is a two character maximum to actually have per uh, you know per account unless you want to buy it with buy more character slots so you would have to actually have you know real life money buy another character slot and that's something that you don't really want to do since you are a free-to-play player. So those two ways are the fastest and most efficient ways to actually get a lot of gold fairly quickly and buy the patron status. You need two apexes to buy the patron status. So the apex price will always vary. It is a player-driven economy. Currently, they are staying roughly around 40 or so gold on a newish server. A more mature server is definitely going to be a lot more expensive. So if you are playing and you are starting later six to eight months into the game cycle, um, again this may not be viable for you because the apex prices may be 200, 300 gold and it would be a lot harder for you to get that money because again all the crops have been saturated and you're not really going to generate much money by farming. Um, the other option that you have is by just doing every single quest there is in the game. These quests are completely free. Uh, they don't cost any labor points or anything. Anyone can do the quest. And as you progress throughout the game, you start to get a lot more silver and gold from the quests. By the time you quest and you get your character to level 50, you'll have approximately 200 gold coins just from questing. And that required no labor whatsoever. So those are the three ways to actually gain a lot of money. The first one is farming and planting crops uh, using the public farms. I do recommend trees early on in the public nursery over here in Solace Headlands and that will generate you a lot. If the tree prices are only, the, the log prices are only around seven 
or eight silver. Uh, I do not recommend you know using your labor points for that, as you will find other things that you can use your labor points on that will generate more. Or planting, say, like wild ginseng and other things. Well, there's also one last other thing that I'm not too even familiar with, um, but there are special wild crops out here in the open. And these wild crops, it's actually called wild ginseng. The wild ginseng is a super pro, uh, super potion that doesn't share cooldown with any of the other potions in the game. And the potion, I'll get to one as soon as I get to the uh, town over here, it restores 20,000 HP. And I do not know exactly off the top of my head what the cooldown is on the potion, uh, but it is a, it's a godsend potion. And the cool thing about it is that it's a wild spawn out in the open, so keep your eyes open for wild little shrubs. And they do actually have a set location spot, but it is a, a, a random chance. So over here, we'll just take this as an example. Um, we'll say that a flower can grow here. So this is a spawning spot for a flower. The flower isn't here because someone gathered it. When some time has passed, like say two hours or so, a flower will randomly generate here and start growing from a seed link. The seed link will have a certain amount of time, and once the time clicks, it will hit maturity and you can gather it. Anyone can gather it. These are wild crops that are free to take. Once you gather that flower, it again, the cycle is going to repeat. The time period is going to go over. A new flower is going to generate. Um, but there are, again, those wild ginseng. So there's a like a 1% chance or a 5% chance that this flower right here will turn into a wild ginseng on its next spawn. So it's a very low chance, but they do spawn out in the open. So always keep your eyes out for wild crops. Hover your cursor over the wild crops and you know see if there is an item that is called wild ginseng. And the reason you want that crop specifically is because that crop sells for two gold per wild ginseng. And you actually gather three of them at once. So if you find a spawning location for the wild ginseng, you can generate yourself six gold every time you collect that wild ginseng. The wild ginseng spawn locations are actually not known. There's no public guide out there currently um, as of this recording. I myself have only found one of them, and that's just by running through the game and looking at you know different locations, and I just ran across one uh, randomly. It did actually respawn quite often there, so the respawn rate is probably around 20% or 25%. So you can actually farm and harvest those guys uh, fairly efficiently once you find the you know the spawning locations. There has been reports that players have found them in every single zone, in the starting zones. They have found them, so you just have to keep your eyes open and look for these special harvests. So we'll get over here. And this is what I'm talking about here, wild ginseng. It instantly restores 20,000 HP, like I said. Uh, the shop price, which is the NPC vendor price, is 2 gold. And you'll notice here that the auction house price is very, very low. And the reason is, is because people don't even know about this. This is a new potion that no one even really knows about. Uh, once the community starts to realize that there is an item called Wild Ginseng out there that actually restores 20,000 HP, uh, which is a full health restore, and it does not share cooldown with your um, other potions, these things are going to be ridiculously expensive um, because you cannot actually you know, plant them yourself. It's a wild random spawn. So these prices right here, I could buy these up and in a month or two or say I make a video on the wild ginseng and, the, and you know what it does, then these prices are going to skyrocket. Um, you'll notice that some of the potions, just the generic crappy potions in game, are selling for like 50 silver. So we'll go to consumables. So this is a rank 1 potion, and it's selling for 1 silver. We'll go expensive.
we have some potions here selling for five. This one's selling for fifteen. So this server is still in the maturity stage. It hasn't actually got um, high level um, you know, alchemist yet. So there's not really high level potions out there. But once the server does mature some, the potions will be selling for one to you know two gold each. Uh, it's crazy. So this wild ginseng will definitely be worth a lot more a lot more money and it's a great item to buy early on in a server when they are cheap because you see you buy it right now for four gold and two silver you really can't lose because you can NPC this for four gold so if at the very worst you don't want it and you can just throw it away you'll get almost all your money back you'll lose two silver for buying it so we go ahead and buy this right here and we'll just hold on to this because like I said this is the equivalent of just having a gold storage on your character and the prices will dramatically increase once people actually know about wild ginseng the base value that you can always sell to the NPC is six gold so finding that random spawn out in the world will generate you at least at least six gold for three and that's why you see people have three bunches up because you always get three when you gather it from the wild node so those are the tips right there how to actually get apex and here we'll show you the actual prices of apex currently and this is what you need this gives you credits which in turn you use those credits to buy the patron status you need 2400 credits so you need two apex again to buy patron status those are some ways how to get gold quickly how to efficiently gather enough to get apex quick easy uh, you have the fast way of doing two characters rushing them to 50 guild of stars selling the designs so here's the harpoon clipper design that I was telling you about 50 guild of stars and you can see the price is roughly filled 50 gold then we have the thatched the thatched farmhouse which is selling for a little bit more uh, someone's already bidding on this one for 55 so right now it would be better to sell the thatched farmhouse and you would just shout in game in the trade channel there and you could shout and sell it for say 60 gold and it'll probably sell really really quick um, one of the other downsides to using the auction house is that whenever you sell something on here you have to pay the auctioneer 10% of what you sold so if this guy sells this item for 70 gold right here this farmhouse he is only going to get 63 gold out of the profits and 7 of that gold 10% is going to go to the you know the game the auction house uh, as the tax fee for it so it is better to actually shout and sell over here even if you shout and sell it for 65 gold which is a really really cheap price it's five gold cheaper than the auction house uh, and you might get someone to buy at that if not you'll sell it for 60 and you save yourself a lot of money and a lot of auction house fees so using the chat channels shouting in game selling items and trading items is great great way to get rid of things so don't feel as a free player that you are restricted that you can't sell things on the auction house you actually get a benefit you don't have to pay that 10% sales tax uh, for using the auction house so those are some great ways to make money we'll leave you with one more way and this is again one of my favorite ways and it consists of flipping items so you'll notice things like the worker compensation potion this right here gives you a thousand labor you can use it once every 12 hours if you kinda study the market you'll see when a cheap I, you know, the, the, the prices are cheap and right now this is actually a high price so this is around six gold twenty silver a couple days ago they were only around two gold each so I bought some and actually I didn't buy any on this account but yeah so I bought some for two gold each so I could now shout and looking for games selling the worker compensation potion for say five gold which is a lot cheaper than the marketplace here and those would sell almost instantly so I would make three gold profit on every worker compensation that I just bought 12 hours ago uh, and again these are just market prices they do shift they go up and down based on how much supply and what the demand is currently typically 
a secret here is that the prices are cheaper at night at later on in the day uh, after all the peak hours have passed and all the, the players have uh, you know have left because then the supply kind of replenishes and people put more things on the auction house and then typically they're way more expensive during the peak hour times of playtime so US servers and Europe servers you know whatever peak is probably around uh, 4 Pacific to 8 Pacific or 9 Pacific time that's when the prices will typically be the highest and then prices will typically be the cheapest around 1 to 4 a.m. anyway uh, sorry for the long video here and hopefully you enjoyed that and learned a lot of tips and thanks for watching please like share and subscribe